Welcome back to the Friar Talk podcast and YouTube channel. So for today's episode, we are going to be talking about Matt Olson to the Padres trade rumors. Um, we're also going to be briefly talking about the Yankees who have been brought up as uh, another option that he could potentially get moved to. Now, it seems pretty clear that the Oakland A's are trying to move some pieces away um, and and doing what they do, I guess. I don't know. Selling their good players. Um, this happens every couple years with A's. So apparently this is the offseason. So Matt Olson, he could potentially be moved. And I think it was him, Chris Bassett, and Sean Manea. Were, those were two guys that were rumored to be, maybe be part of a trade package that involves him. Um, what the Padres would pay... And we're gonna have to go over this because we're gonna kind of pick out like, okay, what would you do? What would you want to make the the deal with him? Because we both we all like the idea of adding him, but at a certain price. You don't want to have some crazy overpay for Matt Olson because some of the trade packages that have been discussed are like ridiculous, like they're crazy. Um, but the guys that have been mostly linked to him, Trent Grisham, Eric Hosmer, and some type of swap. Um, which is a little weird because you'd probably think that'd be a three-team deal just because it doesn't make sense for the A's to take on a bunch of salary with Eric Cosmer. Um, and then you look at uh, Robert Hassel, Luis Campusano, Justin Lange, um, other mid-tier prospects have been talked about with him as well. Um, I've seen some people talk about C.J. Abrams and McKenzie Gore, but I would not expect them to be part of the deal. So I think that – I don't think that would be a, a real option there. Um, but – Isaac, what do you think about these guys, and what would a deal look like? What would a good deal for the Padres um, that's realistic be to go get Matt Olson and maybe one of those uh, pitchers that I mentioned as well? It's hard to it's hard to you know exactly pinpoint what I would want to give up just because it's hard to want to give up Robert Hassel or Trent Grisham. If there's one I would rather give up. I think we already talked about it. I'd rather give up Robert Hassel, even though I think his value is higher. I think his ceiling is a lot higher. I just think, you know, Trent Grisham, if he's able to find some consistency, I think he can be a blue chip player. Um, and, and that's going to be the main thing with Trent Grisham this year. If he's still on this team is that he needs to be able to find consistency because I think, you know, in terms of, you know, outside of the pitching staff, I think he's the most underrated like guy that needs to produce. Like when I think of a guy other than Fernando, Jake and Manny, a guy that has to produce for this Padres team to be good, it's Trent Grisham. He's doing consistently. However, he's highly touted around the league. I mean, he has a very solid 2020s. 2021, he had a good year up until June, July, up until that Washington series, and then everything went downhill significantly for him. He was pretty atrocious after that. So um, it's kind of hard because I feel like you'd be selling low on him if you include him in a Matt Olson trade or a, you know, Bassett, Manaya, whatever it is, I feel like you'd be selling low on him. Um, but in terms of the other guys, Robert Hassel, really hard to, really hard to trade him just because we've seen his ceiling. We've seen, um, you know, the power he has in the minors and what he's done up until now. He only had 19 at bats in the spring training that he played in. And I believe he struck out in most of them, but you can't really hold, hold him to that. I mean, that was his first time seeing any, I believe, any major league action, even in like or minor league action. I believe that was his first time. So hard to hold him accountable for that. We'll see how he does this spring training. Um, CJ Abrams absolutely should not be included in that. I forgot the other names that you said. What were the other names? Eric Hosmer. Eric Hosmer, I believe, probably won't go to the A's. I think, you know, with Eric Hosmer, they're trying to they're trying to get rid of money. Unless it's a salary floor. Then maybe, but even then, they would just keep their players instead of instead of get Eric Hosmer. So, um, if if Eric Hosmer is gone, it'll probably be in a three team deal. And then what are the other names? Um, Campusano, um, and then mm. I mentioned Lange. I don't know. Lange are like a guy that kind of tier. Okay, cool. So Campusano is if we're gonna get rid of Eric Hosmer, it it seems like a consensus, you know, throughout. Uh, the reporters of the Padres and, and everyone who follows the Padres that it would be Campusano going with Hosmer in a trade. And it's hard to imagine anyone else. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I understand that you want to get rid of him. Um, it's also very hard to DFA him considering the amount of money he makes. And, you know, it's a business. It's hard to DFA him because you're essentially paying a guy that's not working for you. So, in that sense, it's hard, but at the same time, the dude just sucks. So if you can DFA him, that'd be nice too. Um, but with Campusano, you're going to get rid of a catcher who can probably hit 20, 25 plus bombs a year. 
not exactly the greatest defensive catcher from what we've seen so far. But if I mean, if he's what it takes to get rid of Hosmer, so be it. Austin Nola is a fantastic catcher, really, really good uh, at calling games behind the plate. Uh, I believe if you look up and down the pitching staff, he's probably their favorite catcher to pitch to. So, I mean, I would love to still have Nola back there. Um, health permitted, he could probably have 10, 15 plus home runs and bat 250, 260. So he's still really nice to have back there. And we just added Alfaro. I know he's kind of trash, but um, Caratini is pretty bad too. So I guess you'd just be missing some depth, but, uh, or at least the second catcher. But uh, Lange, I don't know too much about. I just know he throws gas. He has a lot of potential, a lot of upside. So, I mean, I wouldn't mind getting rid of him. It's just, like I said, hard to get rid of some of these prospects because they have a lot of upside. So, if I'm going to trade any prospect the way I don't want it to be, I'd much rather it be Camposano. I like the ceiling that Hassel has. I also really like the ceiling that Lange has. There's not many starters, you know, that can just pump out 102, like 97 to 102 on a consistent basis. The guy's an athletic freak. If his mechanics get cleaned up and his location, you know, he can start to locate the ball consistently. The guy's going to be absolutely terrifying as a starter, even if he doesn't work out as a starter. Having a guy that throws 102 out of the bullpen, you can't, you don't get many of those guys. It's becoming more common, but guys hitting 102 that's still pretty uncommon you know guy has an absolute cannon of arm his off-speed stuff's coming around he started off really hot he cooled down because he started to walk people but it's ceiling is crazy high for that kid hassle we saw him just absolutely go bonkers you know and a and then i think he got up to high i don't think he got promoted to double a but he had a great year you know, you're going to have more guys coming in free agency that are leaving the Padres in the outfield. That's the only reason I don't like moving Hassel. He's almost there. He's almost ready. You know, you have a couple guys. You already have a spot open right now. You're going to have Myers leaving in a couple of years, and that means you just have Grisham there. I'd much rather promote Hassel, see what he's got, and if not, then go pay someone else. Campy, I like the guy. He's going to be an amazing catcher. Great bat, but since catchers are such a lacking position in the MLB, you don't have a lot of catchers that can hit. Campusano is probably the biggest guy that you can go get your bang for your buck trade-wise. And I think he's probably going to be combined with Hosmer to get rid of him, so I don't know how it's going to work with the A's trade. But if you can do something like Campy, I wouldn't do Lange, maybe like Iggy, Rosario, and maybe a lower prospect for Olden. And I don't know how you're going to get a pitcher in there. You might have to throw Grisham if you're going to get a pitcher in there. But if you just do those three for Olsen, I would be fine with it. I think that's all right. Like, I think that's a pretty solid trade. Um, I do I do like the idea of keeping uh, Lange, but... Lane struggled a lot last year. I don't think that should really take away from his trade value. Like you said, Chase, he throws 102. He came out of high school throwing like – he basically only threw his fastball in high school, right? Wasn't that his whole thing? Like he was like, oh, forget these other pitches. Nobody can hit my fastball. I'm just like pretty much only threw a fastball. Yes, there needs to be a lot of development there, but he has potential to be an, an amazing player. Um, and I don't, I think selling now would just maybe not like selling low. I don't think it necessarily be like that, but just be kind of like selling too early, unless you really just don't think he's good. I think that'd be the only way you'd want to sell a guy like that or trade a guy like that. But yeah, I think, um, I like the campy. It was campy Yugi and another lower tiered prospect for Olsen. I think that's a pretty fair value. I, I think for the A's, like you're getting back a really big piece. You're getting back a premier position and a catcher. Um, a young catcher that can hit. And with how the A's have developed, I would have a lot of faith that Luis Camposano will have a great career in Oakland, if that was the case. Um, I wonder if that's what the Padres want to do, though. It does feel like they do, that they are, they potentially could move Camposano. 
because they're not keeping four catchers. And right now they have four catchers that are going to be are, are ready to be at the MLB level. Um, Kemp is obviously being the guy that's not there yet, but he should be there next year, I think. Um, so if you're, if you're holding on to him, like you have to move one of these other guys or you're not expecting him to be ready to start the year, which I'm, I would be a little bit, I don't know. I'm expecting him to be ready to go to start the year at, in the MLB level. Um, so I like that deal. I think it's pretty good in terms of Luis Camposano or Robert Hassel, who you'd want to pick. I feel like that could be its own discussion for itself. I think that's a pretty fun one um, because there's like both guys are very valuable pieces. Um, and for the Padres, there are questions at the catcher position and there, there are many questions in the outfield right now. So they both provide a lot of value to the Padres and then other teams are likely thinking that they are very, very good players with, a, with great tools um, that are upper level prospects. So I think it's an interesting one, but I do think for what the Padres want to do, it makes more sense that they would move uh, Luis Campusano for Matt Olson with Eric Cosmer with whatever deal that they try to make. Um, but yeah, any, anything else you guys want to add? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, obviously having Matt Olson is a huge upgrade over Eric Cosmer. That's ultimately what it seems like all of us want. I think adding somebody with that can hit probably 30 plus bombs a, a year for the next two years is something that, uh, you know, we consider a, a luxury considering what the Potters have been through throughout all of our lives. Um, now, it would probably also make for the best infield in baseball considering you'd have Olsen, Cronenworth, Tatis, and Machado. One thing that we were talking about before we came on is that the reason it's so hard to trade um, Hassel or Campusano or anyone like that is because those are the type of guys that are going to be on cheap contracts that extend your window to win in a small market where you don't really get as much of an opportunity to win as the Dodgers, the Yankees, the Red Sox. Um, especially considering the development of the of the Padres. We're not the Rays. We're not the A's. So, you know, they have a lot of cheap contracts that help them win also, as well as the Braves. Um, but the reason it's so easy to want to go after somebody like Olsen is because of one player, well, two players. Manny Machado, obviously, um, he has an opt-out pretty soon. And that I know it doesn't seem like, for a lot of us fans, it doesn't seem realistic that he would opt out considering the money he's making, who he's playing beside, but that doesn't matter. He's going to get the same amount of money, maybe a little less, somebody else, somewhere else. And he wants to win. He wants to win. That's the whole reason I believe he came to the Potters because I think he was sold on the idea that, you know, they were going to buy in with Manny and they were going to win. So although it's something that isn't, likely i think it's possible he could opt out if the potteries aren't winning by then and matt olsen absolutely helps those chances um but other than that i mean i'm i'm not opposed to trading campusano or or uh it's tough to trade hassle but i mean it is what it is if you get matt olsen All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for today's episode. Sorry, Chase. I thought you were going to say something for a second. Um, but yeah, so interesting one. Um, if you guys don't think that our trade is either realistic or you wouldn't want to give it up, comment what trade you think that they should offer that you think is an, like, an offer that the A's would want to accept or at least be interested in something to, to build around. Um, I do think something around Luis Campusano makes a lot of sense. Like you said, Isaac, I think trading hassle is a little tough. Um, and I think just for what the where the Padres are, it doesn't seem like they really want to trade. <sighs> I don't know. It, it, it feels like they would be less likely to trade Hassel. So we'll see how it all plays out. But let us know what you guys think. Um, and if there's a deal also where or a three team deal that you think that Hosmer could be a part of in this, because obviously if they're trading for Matt Olson, that means that Eric Hosmer is not going to be on this team. I mean, unless something really weird happens, I would be very surprised if they're both on the team. That it, you would have to have the DH. And even then, I think that's still super unlikely. But let us know, let us know what you guys think, um, and we'll be talking to you guys very soon.